Um, it's incomprehensible that there is a regime that after the slaughter that it has inflicted on the people of Gaza for four months now that has claimed the lives of close to 30,000 people, that has dis displaced almost two million people, that has brought an entire population to the brink of famine, and that is in the dock indicted for genocide, the worst crime uh, a state or human being can commit, that that regime is contemplating yet another massacre of the people in Gaza, specifically those in Rafa. More than a million people cowering under tents and amid rubble and amid the bodies of the slaughtered and the maimed, and the Israeli regime is planning to do it again. Now, I ask you, what kind of regime is capable of that atrocity? What kind of regime thinks it could get away with a genocide in front of the world, and when it is indicted for genocide, want to continue? And the answer, Taoiseach, is a regime for whom there are never any consequences, ever. Words of criticism, even the quite strong language used by Minister Coveney and others today, means nothing, as you rightly said, means nothing to Netanyahu, to Smotrich, Ben Giver, ministers today in the Israeli government saying we want to destroy Gaza. To add to the litany of incitements to genocide made by that government over the last four months. Why do they continue? Why do they think they can do it again? Because there are never any consequences, and the United States continues to give them arms and weapons. European states like Germany and Britain continue to give them arms and weapons, and the European Union givers, gives them favoured trade status, and nobody imposes any sanctions on them. One of the proudest things this country uh, can uh, be proud of is what the, the Dunn Stores workers did in the mid-1980s by going on strike for two years, forcing Ireland to be the first country in the world to impose comprehensive, comprehensive sanctions on apartheid South Africa, which began a domino effect that led to the dismantling of the apartheid regime. Of course, guess who held out till the bitter end to defend that obnoxious regime? The United States and Britain. Same people who are effectively giving the license to Israel to continue its atrocities. Be brave. Do what this country did with apartheid South Africa in the mid-1980s that helped bring that regime down. Admit it is an apartheid state, it is an uncivilized state, it is a barbaric state, and that it should have sanctions imposed on it in order to end that apartheid, end that occupation, and end the possibility of the sort of genocidal slaughter we have seen for the last four months. Thank you, Deputy Taoiseach. <clears throat> Thanks, Deputy. As I said earlier, there is a ceasefire proposal on the table negotiated by Egypt, by the Qataris, and by the Americans. It is our strong view uh, that Israel and Hamas should both accept that ceasefire proposal. It will allow the killing to stop. It will allow refugees, or at least some of them, to return to their homes. It will allow aid to get in, which is desperately ne needed by Palestinian civilians. It will also facilitate the release of over 100 Israeli hostages who have been held for more than three months now uh, against their will uh, by, uh, by Hamas. And I believe that if we can secure that three-month ceasefire, then there's a real possibility of that becoming permanent. That will, of course, require uh, the removal of Hamas leadership and fighters uh, from that territory. Um, and I echo the comments uh, of Minister Coveney earlier today. I do not believe that you respond to a massacre with more massacres. And I do not believe that you can defeat a monster by behaving uh, like a monster yourself. Uh, and we will continue to work with our partners in the European Union and other parts of the world to do what we can do that we believe will be effective. In relation to trade sanctions, you'll be aware that trade is an EU competence. It has been since the European Single Act. Taoiseach, none of the horror, none of the horror that has happened over the last four months would have happened if Western governments, including the European Union and the United States, had not given impunity to Israel for years, long before the current horrific escalation of violence 
Israel was indicted for war crimes and crimes against humanity, for its occupation, for its apartheid, for its ethnic cleansing, going on for decades. The world didn't sanction them. Your government refused even to use the word apartheid. When it is blatant, it's an apartheid regime. When it is blatant that the siege of Gaza was collective punishment of two million people. When it is blatant that the Israeli government is engaged in an ongoing campaign of ethnic cleansing. Impunity was given, granted, and that has given Netanyahu and the crazed, bloodthirsty ministers uh, on, on, that are his lieutenants the confidence to believe that they can continue with this massacre. So I say we have to impose sanctions on this regime and admit it is not a normal state, that it is an apartheid, colonial, brutal regime, and that if we want to see peace as we do, it has to mean the, the end of that apartheid regime where there can be equality between Jewish people, Muslim people, Christian people, and people of no religion who can share the land of Palestine as equals. Anything less, which is, we wouldn't accept anywhere else, we didn't accept it in South Africa, it has to be Thank you, uh, imposed by Western governments, and this government cannot simply say, oh, there's nothing we can do. Because they, that, is impun that impunity is what has given Israel the license to continue with this horror. Thanks. Thanks, Deputy. There are countries in the world uh, that invade other countries, um, that engage in international terrorism, countries like Russia and Iran, for example, and they don't need the sanction uh, or tacit support of the, West or, of the West or Western countries to do that. So that's a position that you're entitled to hold, but it's not the case that there aren't countries that are anti-West. Uh, that don't invade other countries and don't engage in international acts of terrorism. Uh, and that's just a simple fact, uh, Deputy. In relation to, in relation to, to the single state solution, uh, Deputy, I think that's naive. Um, it's a really nice idea. It might be the kind of thing that you and I would sign up to, being secular people. But it's very, very evident to me that the people of Israel don't want a single state solution. They want a Jewish state. And most Palestinians, uh, many of whom voted for Hamas in the last election, want an Islamic state. That's the reality of it. And I heard what you said. The West should impose it on them. The West should impose it on them. Isn't that exactly why we have so many problems in the world? Because the West tried to impose its solutions on other parts of the world, whether it was partition, whether it was, uh, whether it was imposing systems of government that people don't want. It's a funny form of imperialism that you're actually advocating yourself, Deputy, that the West should impose on people in Israel uh, and Palestine uh, a system or a statehood that they don't want. Thank you, Taoiseach. Um, Deputy Matthew McGrath, on behalf of the Rural Independent Group. I wish to highlight again the fact that this, your government is not properly